So, the last time we talked about North Carolina, we learned a lot. We went through this state region by region and figured out who lives where and what it's like to live in different parts of this state. We learned that the worst places to live in the state are on the middle or southern parts of the state, where it's really poverty-stricken and crime's high. Other bad areas in the state are Fayetteville, High Point, and large neighborhoods in Winston-Salem and Greensboro. We also talked about where some of the best places are to live here. The Raleigh metro area has some of the best communities in the nation these days. Lots of the Charlotte metro area is also very nice and growing fast too. Many of the coastal communities here are really nice and quiet as well. We went over the awesome mountain towns and how much of this state is still made up of a lot of rednecks, though the redneck culture here is slowly being diluted. It's a great state. I think it's the best state. But there's a lot more to North Carolina than that. We didn't talk about some North Carolina history, interesting facts, and the issues people in North Carolina face today. Okay, so here I am in the state of North Carolina. It's not as beautiful as it normally is. Yes, we too have gray and dreary days. Not every day is beautiful, but it's January and I'm not wearing gloves, right? So we're gonna pick up the other video where we left off and talk about some other neat stuff. Plus, we're even gonna meet people who live in North Carolina and they're gonna tell us what it's like to live in this state in case you move here yourself. So let's get started. It's time for Corner House Tales, North Carolina, the best state. There's lots of new homes that are built for the families more and more every day. You can see why all the folks bring their money here cause it's a super great state. It's warm and there's lots of those jobs that are coming here, North Carolina. For all the North Carolina news you need to know, I'm Skip Fritzman. Thanks, Skip. If we're moving to North Carolina, you need to know what's happening here. And if you live in North Carolina, you should know what's going on in your state, too. A lot of people are moving into North Carolina these days. Only three other states, Texas, Florida, and Arizona, added more residents last year than here. Every day, 257 more people move to the Tar Heel State. Many are moving to the Raleigh and Charlotte metro areas. Here in Raleigh, some say it's growing too fast. Look at this. Of all the large major metro areas in the country, only Austin, Texas is growing at a faster rate. Most of the newcomers are flooding into the west and south ends of town. Areas like Holly Springs, Morrisville, and Cary have been called some of the best communities to live in the country. It's new and safe and there's no drama here. And the whole region's exploding with new technology and healthcare jobs. Charlotte's also grown fast. It's the 22nd fastest growing city in the country. It's a banking hub, and a lot of upper middle class families are moving in to take advantage of the job growth and the relatively low cost of living. Charlotte is sixth in the country right now for first time home buyers. The mountain community of Asheville is getting so big now that it's making it too expensive for most people. Plus, all the hippies and bums are moving in. On the flip side, outside of Wilmington, the coast has remained fairly unpopulated so far. So why are so many people moving here and how will all this growth impact North Carolina? Well, it's a sunbelt state. It's warmer here than it is in the Northeast and Midwest. And North Carolina is a halfway point for people who flee those regions who don't want the heat and the crowds in Florida. It's relatively affordable. North Carolina is about average for home prices and rent. However, that's going up all the time. It's just slower paced here, but not as slow as in the Deep South. But another reason for its draw is politics or lack of politics. It's a state that's not bogged down by politics or the fervor of its residents. It's a purple state, but there aren't any political extremes. Everybody just kind of gets along here. There aren't any major issues with homelessness, nor are there any large protests. Oh, it's woke here from time to time. Last year, they removed more statues from the downtown area in Wilmington. But those moments don't happen too often here. As more people come to North Carolina, the state's going to have challenges that come with being popular. Traffic and sprawl are both getting really bad in some metro areas, and the southern culture here has all but been diluted. Oh, there's still lots of rednecks back in the sticks with their confederate flags, but it's not nearly as southern as it used to be here. It's certainly not perfect, though. The state's just about last in public school spending. But this state's writing the manual on how to completely reverse its economic fortunes. Forever, this was an agriculture and manufacturing state. Today, it's healthcare, technology, education, and tourism. The state's also quickly becoming a movie-making hub. It's going to be interesting to see how North Carolina changes and when the cost of living catches up with the rest of the country. 
But this state's success is one big reason that the U.S. South is the new go-to region for families looking for a better life. Okay, enough with all that North Carolina news. It's time for some North Carolina facts, everyone. I'd love to learn about some facts. If you move to North Carolina, you need to know some facts about your future home. Plus, if you live here, you should know what's going on too. Stuff like this. Research Triangle Park in the Raleigh-Durham metro area is the largest research park in the United States. Here they do advanced scientific and technical research. It was formed in 1959. Charlotte is the second largest banking center in the nation after New York City. The colloquial demonym or nickname for North Carolina is the Tar Heels. There's a big explanation, but basically North Carolina's pine forests were important for lumber and all that tar from these trees was used to coat the ships. It was said during the Civil War, North Carolina troops held their ground because their feet were sticky from all that tar. The Carolina Hurricanes are the only major professional team from North Carolina to win a world championship. They won the Stanley Cup in 2006. Go Canes! Babe Ruth hit his first professional home run in Fayetteville, North Carolina in 1914. The first gold rush in America didn't start in California, it began here in North Carolina in 1799. Apparently a 12 year old boy found a 17 pound gold nugget in his backyard. They lived way out in the countryside just north of present day Charlotte. Apparently nobody knew the big nugget was gold and the family even used it for a doorstop for years. One day a jeweler told him, hey that's gold, and he bought it off him for three bucks. They got ripped off. Anyways, after they realized it was gold here, a bunch of people came. They didn't find that much more gold though. There are exactly 100 counties in the state of North Carolina, and that's a good even number. There's a lot of restaurants here that got their start in North Carolina. Krispy Kreme, Bojangles, Golden Corral, and Hardee's began their first operations here. As did Cookout, which I personally feel is cheap, but horrible food. The largest surrender of Confederate soldiers during the Civil War happened in Durham County in 1865. Nearly 90,000 soldiers surrendered at a place called Bennett Place. These troops represented every Confederate soldier in Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. The only coup in United States history happened in Wilmington in 1898. A group of men kidnapped a newly elected mayor and installed their own people into office. It had not happened before, and it has not happened since. The entire coast of North Carolina is made up of barrier islands. There's not a single inch of land in the whole state where these barrier islands naturally connect to the mainland anymore. Much of that separation is because of the man-made Intracoastal Highway, which was built in the 1920s. North Carolina has been hit by 55 hurricanes since 1851. Hurricane Hazel was considered to be the deadliest and one of the most expensive. It was a Category 4 when it hit in 1954 with maximum winds of 135 miles an hour. Florida's tops in the nation. It's been hit by 120 hurricanes since 1851. Wilmington was the only port not to fall during the Civil War. That's because the Cape Fear River was hard to navigate by those who were not familiar with its waters. North Carolina leads the nation in number of snake bites. That's scary. You might not think of it as a big state, but it's long. In fact, North Carolina is exactly 500 miles long. Huh. Interesting. Did you know North Carolina ranks second in the production of Christmas trees? Oh, Christmas trees. Everybody loves Christmas trees. That's cool, Mappy. By the way, which state grows the most Christmas trees? Oregon does. Well, good for Oregon, but we're talking about North Carolina. And now it's time for some North Carolina trivia, everybody. Let's call some people from North Carolina and see if they can answer some tough North Carolina trivia questions. This will also give you a chance to meet some people who live here before you move here yourself. I like trivia time. Okay, so everybody, so joining me right now is my good friend, Stowe. Hey, Stowe. Hello, YouTube. Hey, Nick. So, like, I figured since I'm doing North Carolina, I should ask people who live in North Carolina trivia questions, so I should probably just ask people I know, right? Sure. All right. So, yeah, so how, how this works is I ask, um, I ask you five questions um, about North Carolina, and we'll see how many you can get right. Have at it. Okay. 
Okay, so question number one. Um, what was widely considered the worst hurricane in North Carolina state history? That was Hurricane Hazel back in, I think, 1952, 52, 54, right around that range. It is right. That Yes, it was Hurricane Hazel. All right, so right now we're lucky enough to get Scooter Buxton on the phone. Scooter, what are you doing? You're walking around your woods? Where do we start? Woo Ain't nobody know nothing about the South like I do in North Carolina. Let's bring it. All right, Scooter. So question one, what was the worst hurricane in North Carolina history? Oh, man, that's easy. So I would just move there to Carolina Beach, and all of a sudden they said this hurricane was coming in. And then it turned into this little tropical storm named Charlie. Charlie came in, and it flooded a whole bunch of stuff here and there, and I thought, man, maybe I don't want to live down here. So to me, the biggest storm that done come through here was Florence. No, it is not Florence. Sorry. All right, Scooter, you missed the first one. Question number two. In what North Carolina city did Blackbeard the Pirate live for a while? I was shooting pool with a buddy of mine and his girl, and she started talking about how she was third generation Blackbeard. I said, man, that's crazy. Tell me some stories. She started telling me stories, and it's funny, because one of the stories she told me was that Blackbeard was from Raleigh. And I was like, what, Raleigh? No. <laughs> Scooter is not Raleigh. I'm sorry, that is not right. I think I'm gonna miss this slightly, but I'll just go for Nags Head. No, it was not Nags Head, it was Beaufort. Beaufort, all right. All right, Stowe, you got one out of two right. Here's question number three. So North Carolina has the tallest mountain east of the Rockies. Do you know the name of that mountain? That's Mount Mitchell, Nick. Yes, it is Mount Mitchell. I think it's like 6,100 feet tall. All right, Scooter, you missed the first two, and you're still wandering around the woods. I don't know what you're looking for, some deer or something. All right, question number three, Scooter. See if you can get this one. What's the tallest mountain in North Carolina? That's easy. Miss Oxford taught me this when I was 12, and she taught us all kinds of things. One of the things she taught me was the tallest mountain in North Carolina, and she said Mount Mitchell, and of course I paid attention. Final answer. Yeah, you got it, Scooter. It's Mount Mitchell. Good job. I'm shocked you got one. All right, Scooter, you got one out of the first three right. I'm completely shocked that you've got any of these right, to be honest. Question number four is, what's the name of that lost colony that the English settled and then they came back and everybody was gone? It's off the coast in North Carolina. Well, that's easy to make because I've been here 22 years. <laughs> Do I win a prize? Because, hell, I know this one right now in five seconds. It is Portsmouth. It's right on the outside of Okra Coke. I got a million dollars on it. No, it is not Portsmouth. I don't even know where that is. That is not right, Scooter. Oh, man. I'm letting you down, North Carolina. Um... All right, Scooter. Final question, you got one out of four right. Let's see if you can get this one. So North Carolina's had one team win the national championship out of all its professional sports teams. What team was that? Oh man, well come on now. It's America's pastime, we all know what it is. It's called NASCAR racing. My boys Earnhardt say all come from Kannapolis, North Carolina. And then they win all the races in Mooresville and Darlington because those are the only two goddamn traps that mean anything. So my answer is Dale Earnhardt, and then my second answer is Dale Jr. Okay, so it's not NASCAR, uh, it's not Dale, and it's not Dale Jr. It's actually the Carolina Hurricanes. Come on, Scooter, you can do better than that. NASCAR. But hey, you got one out of five rocks, Scooter. It's more than I thought you'd get. I think that was the Carolina Hurricanes, Nick, the hockey team. It was the Hurricanes in 2006. They won a right. national championship, world title for the NHL. Yeah, the only only professional team in the state that's ever won a, a national championship. So, so uh, the Panthers uh, have gotten to a Super Bowl, yeah. but not won. Yeah, and I don't think the Hornets have ever done anything. Uh, I know it's time for the history of North Carolina in three minutes or less. A long time ago, before you even thought about moving here, North Carolina wasn't even North Carolina. Well, it was kind of North Carolina. 
but half the place was covered in ocean water. Then the water receded, and the animals and people could move in. You know, dinosaurs and stuff. Fast forward a billion years later, and some Native Americans moved in. Many were from the Mississippian culture. They moved into the area from other regions to flee disease and slavery. But there were a lot of ancient cultures here spaced out all over the state. The Spanish were the first to arrive here from Europe. Hernando de Soto made contact with the Native Americans in 1540. His men tried to colonize the area, but the natives ran them off. Turns out that was the first European attempt at colonizing the interior U.S. England wanted a piece of North Carolina too. So in 1584, Elizabeth I granted a charter to Sir Walter Raleigh. He sailed a bunch of boats over and attempted to set up two colonies in the region in 1586. Both failed, including the lost colony of Roanoke. At Roanoke, there were about 100 people, but they had trouble getting things going. So one guy went back to England to get more resources and people, and then he returned three years later, and everybody was gone without a trace. Where they went is still a mystery, but the word Croatoan was carved into the trees, whatever that means. Scary stuff, people. But eventually, North Carolina would become settled just fine. In 1663, King Charles spent a bunch of money to send more people over here. They finally established a community and named the place Carolina because the Latin word for Charles is careless. So he named the place after himself. I would have too if I spent all those pounds. Things were pretty unstable at the time though. There were English colonies all over the state, but they had to deal with pirates. A lot of pirates liked the North Carolina coast because of all the inlets. They could park in hidden areas all over the coast and drink and steal and womanize and fix their ships. Blackbeard was the most famous pirate. He lived here in Beaufort for a while, and then he died after his ship was captured by some hotshot military guy from Virginia. Lots of ships crashed off of North Carolina's shore over time. Here's a map of the ships they know about. So many ships have been lost off the North Carolina coast that the area is known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. More than a thousand ships have sunk in these waters since records began in 1526. Anyways, after all the pirates were run off, lots more people came. They grew tobacco and cotton all over the state. But then came the American Revolution. If you remember, colonies didn't like the way they were treated, so they wanted to kick the English out. North Carolina was the first state with the balls to publicly complain about British rule in a famous document called the Halifax Resolves. Then the, the colony of North Carolina was the first to sign a resolution to be independent from England entirely. It was called the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence. It was the predecessor to the actual Declaration of Independence. The North Carolina flag still has both dates on its seal, the dates when it led the nation to first stand up to Britain. Good for you, North Carolina. North Carolina later seceded from the Union because of slavery. As you can imagine, this state relied on slaves big time, all those cotton fields and all those tobacco fields. In fact, tobacco and cigarettes were a big part of the state's economy for a long, long time. Leading up to the Civil War and for much of the time after the Civil War, this state was run by Democrats. In fact, there were only two Republican governors here during the entire 20th century. However, the people voted to elect Republicans for president in nine of the last 10 elections. Then, two men flew an airplane here for the first time in our nation's history, and a bunch of hurricanes hit. Then the state's governor pissed off a lot of people when he said men had to pee in men's restrooms. And that really happened. Okay, so that was a pretty good video, right? We learned a lot. And we even met people who live here. North Carolina is a great state, but the question remains, will it remain a good place to live despite all the incoming residents? Will all the new people that move here make this place not feel Southern anymore? And is North Carolina gonna remain a battleground state for the years to come? We'll have to see. But for now, hopefully this state remains a great one. And all the people that move here don't ruin it like you. There's lots of new homes that are built for the families more and more every day. You can see why all the folks bring their money here cause it's a super great state. It's warm and there's lots of those jobs that are coming here North Carolina. Okay, so normally at the end of these videos I interview somebody who lives in their state to get their perspective on what it's like to live in their state. But since I live here, I figured why interview anybody else? I should just interview myself, right? Okay, Nick, so you've been all over the state. You've lived in North Carolina for seven years. You probably know it better than anybody else, and I know you do a lot of research on your own home state. 
uh, give people an idea uh, who are thinking of moving here or who want to know more about North Carolina. Um, what's it like in different regions of the state and uh, where should people maybe consider moving to if they make North Carolina their home? Yeah, um, you know, there's different regions on the coast. Nick, um, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of the mountains. Um, you know, you have a lot of communities up there. They're small. So you have Boone, which is kind of a big town. It's a college town. Appalachian State's up there. Um, you have some other little smaller communities that are really great places to be. It's just, you know, 5,000, 6,000 people in all of the, all of the towns. So you're not going to have a lot to do, but it's going to be really peaceful, really pretty up there in the, in the North Carolina mountains. Um, you know, Asheville's there. I'm not really a fan of Asheville anymore. I feel like, um, Asheville has become hippified, if you will. It used to be a really cool place. It's still a great place to be. It's a great place to vacation, but it's really expensive to live there now, Nick. And, um, you just don't have the, the, the small, cute mountain town vibe anymore. There's a lot of burnouts that have moved into Asheville and they kind of hang around and kind of hang, hang out on the sidewalk and camp out and smoke and it's just kind of gross. A lot of people are not happy about the way Asheville's gone, but the rest of the North Carolina mountains are great. At the bottom of the mountains, you've got places like um, Hendersonville and Morganton. They're really great little communities kind of at the bottom of the mountains. So if you don't want to live in the mountains, you can live in one of those areas. Of course, you have Charlotte, which is becoming a really um, huge place for people to move to. Uh, uh, they, they, a lot of banking, a lot of great jobs. It, it feels like it's kind of a segregated city though, unfortunately. Um, they have a new area they call Southside in Charlotte. That's all new and modern where a lot of people are moving. But most of the people in, in the Charlotte metro area that are gonna be upper class or upper middle class where it's safer are gonna be in the North Charlotte suburbs or on the south side, on the South Carolina side of the state line um, in places like Fort Mill or Rock Hill. I think that's what it's called. Um, that's a great place to be. Charlotte's not a bad place to be at all. It's not really even very dangerous. There aren't really any large ghettos anymore. They're kind of gentrifying Charlotte. But as you get closer um, east of Charlotte, the next biggest cities that you're gonna come to are gonna be Winston-Salem and Greensboro. That's what they call the triad area. I'm not really a fan of that area. They're trying to gentrify it. They're trying to make it better, but it's really not that great. Um, it's kind of ghetto and beat up, to be honest with you. I wouldn't move there. Um, but I would move to the Raleigh metro area. That's that's where everybody's moving. I know that you talked about that earlier in your video, Nick. Um, anything in the Raleigh area is gonna be fantastic. They've got communities springing up all over the place where um, families can go with brand new communities, where it's safe, where the schools are great. Anywhere within a 30 or 45 minute drive of, of downtown Raleigh is really a great, great place to be right now. On the south side, there's places like Garner and Fuquay Verena. Um, East Raleigh's not really built up that that much, but that's actually kind of a good thing, I think. Um, the north end of Raleigh's gonna be where all the rich, fancy people live. You probably can't afford to live up there. But Raleigh's just a, a fantastic place to be. Chapel Hill's a great place to be. Durham's a little dangerous. There's some ghetto parts of Durham, but they're gentrifying the hell out of Durham, and it's actually a really kind of a neat place to be. There's tons to do in that whole area. Um, most of the east, far east side of Raleigh, uh, of uh, North Carolina is gonna be just backwoods, uh, small town farms, um, not a lot going on, not too bad, not too good. Um, it's just really nothing going on there yet. The coast is amazing. Uh, the Outer Banks are nowhere that you probably would want to live with a family. Um, there's really not a lot going on up there. It's more of a vacation place. Uh, or for, for people who've lived there forever. It's really expensive and it's really pretty, but it's frankly, it's pretty isolated and kind of boring. But if you wanna be way away from everybody else, you go out to the Outer Banks. Uh, the lower Outer Banks, the southern half of the state, um, it's gonna be really small towns, um, not a lot going on, really safe, really cool. But the best part about the uh, North Carolina beaches is it's just chill, Nick. Um, it's clean, it's safe. Um, not a lot going on, but you can park easily. You can go to the beach and you don't have cigarette butts and needles in the sand. Um, really long stretches, white sandy beaches with warm water. It's probably the best coast in the country outside of Oregon. Um, and Oregon's coast is really not really very functional. It's cold, it's rocky. 
So that's the coastal area. Um, and then if you get kind of in the middle of the state, it's really not a lot going on. Uh, it's kind of isolated, a lot of poverty, a lot of former agriculture towns. Um, it's really not a lot of places, there aren't really a lot of places where you could go and really start a family. So I would say if you're gonna move to North Carolina, you could focus on um, anything in the Charlotte metro area, especially North or South Charlotte or the Raleigh area for sure. Those are gonna be your two best places to go where all the jobs are, where all the people are going. But it's a great state, Nick, and I'm glad you're talking about it because it's been a long time since you've actually done something on North Carolina. I'm here right now, as you can see, I'm driving around. Uh, you cannot see because the, the camera's facing that way. Well, thank you very much, Nick, for the interview. That was really insightful. So tell everybody what it's like to live in your state. There's a lot of people that are thinking about moving to North Carolina. What kind of advice would you give to a family that's thinking about moving to North Carolina? Um, what I've always liked about North Carolina, um, you know, I was born here. I've spent most of my life here other than living in South America for a little while and living in Europe for a little while. And what I like about North Carolina is that you've got a good mix of everything within about a six hour drive. So we have, depending on where you are. So um, we've got big cities that have jobs and the economy and, you know, places where people can, you know, make money and, uh, and find entertainment options. But then we've also got on our East Coast, uh, a wide variety of good beaches with a lot of diversity. Um, and then we have really nice mountains, the Appalachian Mountains are uh, one of the oldest mountain chains in the world. And like you said earlier, we've got Mount Mitchell. So that's the highest peak on the East Coast. So we've got some, uh, you know, got some decent sized mountains. Since they're old mountains, they are, uh, you know, really heavily forested and beautiful, particularly in the fall, as most people know, when the leaves change colors. Um, but it makes them pretty accessible too. You know, when I when I've gone out to Colorado before, and you know, for for a ski trip or something like that, um, you know, there's so much rock and dirt and um, and uh, so much above the tree line that sometimes you uh, sometimes I really you know appreciate the beauty of North Carolina and how we've got so much uh, so much mature forest in our mountains um, that, uh, you know, you, you see the plants everywhere and the trees everywhere. And when I, you know, when I've been out West, uh, it's so much more rocky. Um, it's got its own type of beauty, but you know, this is home. So, um, but I would, I would just tell people that, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a pretty nice climate. Um, the, uh, our mountains get a decent amount of snow, but not insane. Our, uh, our beach communities uh, on the East Coast, uh, we tend to be, you know, we, t we don't tend to dip below a high temperature of 40 degrees all that much in the winter. Um, don't, we don't freeze all that much. So you can have a pretty pleasant uh, winter in most of the state. Um, and then our, uh, our summers, well, you know, summer is summer. We get hot. Um, but, uh, if you're, if you're somewhere around the coast, you got that breeze that can keep you cool. Um, but yeah, so at North Carolina has got great educational institutions too. our, um, our public school system, our private school systems, uh, and universities. I mean, it has to rival, you know, most in the USA. Um, and you know, when you, uh, when you mix that in with, uh, beautiful places to visit and travel around to, um, some pretty rich history. Uh, it's a nice place to live. I'd, I'd say if you're, if you're born in North Carolina and you're, uh, and you're able to enjoy it, you've, you've found yourself in a pretty good place. Yeah. Well, what's the bad, there's gotta be some bad, uh, every <laughs> state can't be perfect. What would you say the challenges are here or the, on the, on the, the cons of North Carolina? Sure. That, that's a little bit tougher question. Um, the, uh, the wealth and the opportunities tend to be concentrated towards the areas where there's the most population. Um, so, 
Uh, so that might cause some difficulties for a lot of our rural communities. Um, I know there are, you know, rural communities. Uh, I, I come from an agricultural family background um, in the past, and and I know that for sure our rural communities that used to be heavily agricultural, you know, it's not as easy of a uh, not not nearly as easy of a, a path for them these days to. Um, to make ends meet, to keep their communities, you know, thriving and uh, and uh, and a place where you know their kids and grandkids want to stick around. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure that I know that folks will, you know, once they've had some opportunities, will you know, go out and buy some land in a rural place for peace and quiet, maybe. But the uh, but the people that have been there for a long time, yeah, you know, they uh, it, it's not uh, it's not. A, super easy place at this point to, uh, to scratch out a livelihood. That's yeah, the yeah. thing there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, every state's going to have its, its, its rich and poor areas, but North Carolina has a very large area where, yeah, it's pretty much one ring on the edges of the state and everything in the middle is just, you know, mm -hmm. it's past its prime. I'm going to be going down there and, uh, doing a lot of driving around here next month. I'm going to go drive around, um, Lumberton, Whiteville, um, Lorenberg, um, some of the Fayetteville, like, you know, just like the middle part of the state, yeah. Ashboro South, where yeah, it's all, Greensboro. you know, agriculture days gone bad mm -hmm. and, you know, um, to kind of let people know what that's like, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, you know, you grew up here, you, you, you were born in the state. Yeah. Um, how has the state changed? Well, I, I was I was born and raised in Charlotte was there from uh, Charlotte area was there from birth until uh, until left high school um, and the uh, the level of development ha has been insane um, uh, North Carolina used to be off the beaten path and these days I would say you know we're we're right in the heart of um, some of the most rapidly developing uh, areas in the country, most, some of the most desirable areas in the country, um, particularly as the pan uh, pandemic has set in and people have gone remote for work and have decided that, you know, well, why am I, you know, why am I living in this place when I can work remote and go anywhere I want to? Uh, North Carolina's continued to be one of those places that uh, folks have looked to real actively as a, as a new destination to either retire or to move to for a, for a nicer climate. Um, and so um, I've, I've seen North Carolina, I've seen Charlotte go from um, living uh, five miles from my grandpa's farm and being able to drive there in about five minutes and you know pass a couple of cars um to uh to something that would probably take you you know a good half an hour now and you'd pass by shopping malls and the whole everything on either side of you is commercial and um and it would take you know take you a half an hour to get there um and uh, everything would be packed. You'd be passing brand new hospitals and, uh, you know, and a lot of that is progress and, um, and, you know, economy's thriving and people wanted to be there. But, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I just about could have ridden my bike down a farm road <laughs> all the way for five miles. And, uh, and now it's almost completely built up. So uh, development has been a big thing, particularly in our cities. Our, our cities have grown like crazy. Um, been plenty of benefit to that. Um, the uh, it, it's not it's not as idyllic as when I was a kid, but uh, but there there sure is a lot more um, sure is a lot more going on. Yeah, I you know I always ask people what what the major challenges are um, that their state's going to be dealing with in the near future, and I would say just growth and and handling the influx of people coming in. Is there anything that you would add to that or would that be the main challenge for North Carolina? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a, that's a good observation for sure. Um, you know, like, like we like to joke around here. Um, 
I-40 uh, interstate has been under construction uh, between here and Raleigh and Greensboro for the last 40 years. And you can't, you can't drive up that interstate without, without, you know, running into a section that's, that's gotta be under construction and they're trying to widen it again and make it bigger, or fix something that's going wrong. So um, I think that's just kind of a good example. You know, we, we didn't expect so much growth, I don't think. And so like Charlotte, for instance, only got a, you know, a belt road around the city within the last maybe 10 years. Um, and, uh, you know, it should have had it 30 years ago um, to help that traffic circulate around town instead of having to clog up the, the streets going through the, uh, the neighborhoods. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, grow, this much growth brings uh, a lot of opportunities um, and you know, things like jobs and, uh, and you know, strengthening economies, at least in the areas that are getting, uh, getting that uh, boost. But yeah, for sure, at the same time, um, it, uh, it, you know, it takes you by surprise and, uh, and it just gets busier and busier. And uh, we don't know, you, you don't always know how uh, you're gonna be able to deal with all that much increase in population. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, a beautiful state. And, you know, I, I, I tell people to come here. I brag about how great the state is all the time. I don't tell people where I live because I don't want people to come to where I live. I right. tell them to go to other places and nobody really knows where I live. They know I used to live in Raleigh. Nobody knows where I live now. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, I would say it's my favorite state. I've been to almost all of them. Um, the ones I have not been to, I know that we're better than, um, it's just going to continue to grow and probably be the new hotspot place. It already is becoming the go-to place on the East coast and, and, you know, the, the South as an, as a whole is the new hotspot for everybody to move to. And we're one big reason for that because North Carolina is just a great place to be. Yeah. I, yeah. I could have moved. I had plenty of opportunities to move away. And I kept coming back. It doesn't hurt that I've got a huge family in the Charlotte area. So that's yeah. a, that's a plus. Well, thank you for your insights, Stowe. I'm sure people really appreciate your uh, your knowledge. Absolutely. And your Thanks uh, for inviting me to be on the show, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're you're like four doors down, so it's not like you have too far to go to come down and hang out. Don't tell them where you live. I don't tell them where I live. That. <laughs> Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right, someone's a realtor now. Who wants to deal with a realtor they don't know when you can have me help you, right? Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.